In this episode, we are going to assemble the drive unit back together. Also, we sanded the shaft with 600 grit sandpaper only in the shown location in order to make the shaft roughness the proper value, roughly speaking, for the seal. So we start the assembly with both shafts simultaneously. For the Toyota RAV4 and the Mercedes-Benz, we have this disc that's in the way. For the normal Tesla, you can start with this shaft on its own. And after you've hammered this in, you can do this shaft. Also, how I hammer it in, I put pressure on the outer race, which is better for the bearing. So I alternate from both sides, between both sides, until it's in halfway. I kind of do the same for this one. This one goes in easier. And then I stop when it's in halfway. So now we're roughly halfway. We stopped. We tilted this uh, piece of metal. And now we can inspect, maybe with a feeler or something like that, To we can inspect if the, the shaft is properly uh, going into the uh, seal and the seal is not folding double and so on. I forgot to say that before I put the shaft in, I put a little bit of oil Dextron 6 both on the uh, seal and the shaft outer surface so it's easier to uh, pop it in okay yeah uh, i uh, stopped using the hammer instead i use a piece of steel protects it a little bit and then i alternate between here and here also don't forget when you hammer to alternate between these two locations and also alternate between the two shafts so hammer somewhere in a hole there like like so and then on the the bottom alternates here if you don't do that in the course of time this face over here will contact um, this face over here and then it gets uh, stuck and that's not good uh, at least for the the toyota and the bands for the normal tesla you won't have that problem note that the bearing should uh, stick out from this surface roughly 0.8 millimeter or one millimeter something like that so do not keep hammering on this uh, outer race because you think it's not fully in. It is normal that there is a distance between these two surfaces. Next we are mounting the rings. This is for the primary shaft. It will be mounted uh, somewhere there. And four newton meter is the torque. I uh, cleaned these bolts with a metal brush. I'm going to use Loctite 222 because uh, Judging by the color, that is what was used before, and judging by the thread size. And we're going to uh, do the same with the intermediate shaft, but then with uh, 6 newton meter of torque. So instead of 4 newton meter, I gave them 6 newton meter because 4 really felt as too little. Next, we are mounting the oil pump 6 newton meter on the big ones, 4 newton meter on the small ones, and we lock tight all six of them. This time I did not torque these uh, three more than four newton meter because they are pretty fine threads compared to uh, the bigger ones that are going six newton meter. So now that's in. Next up is the differential. For the differential don't forget to put the shim in first. Goes there. And then uh, for the bolts, uh, all the bolts are potential leak locations. The manufacturer of these nuts does state that they are reusable in their specifications, but I don't fully trust that. So I'm going to also add some blue Loctite 242 to the uh, end of every thread before I put on the, the nut. I put it upright like this again, so it is easier to plop in the differential. So with a little brush, I put the Loctite uh, all around the um, the bolts to make it uh, more watertight with the brush because with the uh, with the tube itself it's kind of difficult. This is the result. The uh, thread uh, locker Loctite is oozing out between the nuts and the cast everywhere. So hopefully this is uh, oil tight. Next we put back the plastic gear for the uh, oil pump it should go here and then we have to put the little c-clip on there as well don't forget that because uh, the bearing may overheat if you forget that there it's in place 
I added some black liquid electrical tape on top of the white wire and also overlapping the epoxy simultaneously because the white wire did not seem to bond very well to the black epoxy so it could be a, a potential leak path that's why next i uh, popped back in this bearing over here next uh, this bearing over here has to be put back that's this one and if you look there's a remnant of some uh, glue i think it's loctite 648 so i'm going to just put a little bit of uh, that kind of glue in there maybe one location because there was not much uh, on it maybe one or two locations And there it's back in. Next we're going to dry fit the two halves. Make sure the parking pole is disengaged, meaning you have to rotate this thing uh, counterclockwise. Uh, that's only applicable when you have the Toyota or the Mercedes for the normal Tesla, it's uh, not even there. But how to get this wire plus this sleeve that's over it back through this hole coming out here. It's a pain in the neck. I tried many things. Finally, I took this sleeve off and I put the sleeve back starting in this uh, location so I pry it through and then uh, I'll pull it out here so now the sleeve is in you can see it over here and over here next I push the piece of metal wire through make sure to uh, first make it round at the end u-turn otherwise it gets stuck in the braid all right I helix the wire all around the uh, white wire and the uh, green and blue wires and I put protective tape around it. Man, I pull it through but it's extremely tight and when you pull it through make sure with uh, tongs or something you hold on to this braid so that, you, so that you don't pull the braid along with it into the hole and lose it. It's tight. Alright, it fits. Nothing sticks out. So now we can take it apart again and uh, Put some uh, liquid sealant uh, between the two halves. When you pull the two halves apart from each other again, make sure with a tongue to grab the uh, the braid here. Otherwise, it will be pulled out and stay here, and you will not get it back in there unless you take out this whole cable again and do everything again with a fishing wire and so on. Next, we put liquid sealant on the mating surface. I have Permatex Ultra Black. It will solidify. I will apply it uh, on the inside of all the holes all the way around starting at the top to minimize the chance of leakage. After that I will also apply it on the outside of all the holes. Be careful to keep this little hole open. Don't put, do not put too much around it. And then immediately we're going to uh, assemble both halves and put all the bolts in only finger tight, wait two hours and then uh, torque it to spec. Also, after you applied this, do not smear it out with your fingers. So get a Q-tip and make sure that the coolant channel is uh, clear. Also I uh, hand, hand tightened or finger tightened a bit more actually all these bolts but there is still a, a gap. So now I let it uh, cure for two hours and then torque it to spec.